Tonight, what I thought I would do, tonight we're going to do hot air balloons. Uh, the pattern I purchased from um, Wooden Teddy Bear. They come in two different varieties. They come in the small, they come in this size, and they come in the large. And you can go bigger if you want. The neat part of bottom is they're all nested. And what we're going to do is they're nested, and you'll see what I mean. But we're going to do one from beginning to end. And the only reason I picked this one to do is I've got less cuts to do so you guys don't have to watch a long time. And everybody says, well, person sawing is this. Well, you know, I sat in turning meetings, and they were turning and turning and turning and turning. So I don't know what the difference is, so we're going to do it. But I thought tonight what I would try to do is I'm going to do it from beginning to end. So that way, if you're new or old or been around for a while, I might show something you might be able to use in your thing, okay? So in this case, I needed some wood. So you want this wood to make this one. So I got, got my wood, and hopefully it's the right thickness. It's got a little bit of twist to it, but you know it's not gonna make it's gonna be a little bit harder to cut, but it's not gonna affect the outcome of the project at the end. That's plywood. Okay. Pardon me? No. no. Plywood. No, that's not wood. It's not plywood. It is uh, maple. it's maple. It's a maple that, that was over at Rob's. It was scrap, and we ran it through his nice uh, planer and, and or resawed it, and then, then we planed it so it would be the right thickness. Because the trick is, this this one goes like this, and if it's not the right thickness for the four of them, what happens is you split it out and they break. So what we're going to do is this one's very easy. It's stack cut. You need four. You need four pieces. It's stack cut. Okay, so there's four pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a packet. Now, I can make a packet a number of ways. I can use blue tape or I can use a nail gun. That's my, this is my favorite tool now. Being it's battery operated, I don't have to have a tool. And I've got the right size, right size nails in it. They're one inch. They fit perfectly on this. So we can do another thing, but this is too easy just to go boom, 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 boom. It won't show you if you don't have a nail gun, it's going to be a problem. So what I like to do is take my stack. This one's got some bows in them, so I'm trying to get them so they stay relatively flat. So what I'm going to do is take my tape, and if you're old enough, you remember a lot of Christmas packages were wrapped this way. They came like this, they came like this, went here, don't, don't, they don't have to be too, and you went like this, and you went here, and then you came back the other way, okay, and I'm going to cut this off right now, but okay, that, what that does is at least gets my pack together and it's together, but I can't saw it like that. But what I'm saying, if you look at it, it's it's pretty good. Now, one other thing I could use, I could use double stick tape, okay? But if you use double stick tape, try to place it in places that are outside of your pattern, i.e., the pattern we'll be using tonight is this. The only reason I say that, sometimes that double stick tape doesn't want to come off. And you, don't, and you don't need to cover the whole thing in double stick tape. You only need a, you know, maybe, a, maybe a half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch in a few places. And what's it do is it does it. But you could, do, you could also do it with double stick tape. Now, in my case, I, don't want, I hate glue when it gets impregnated into the wood. It's a pain, OK? So therefore, what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to cover this with tape only because I want my I want my stack to be a little bit stronger together. But you could, this is what I use a lot of now, OK? This one happens to be you know, colored or whatever. But this is basically shelf paper. It's sticky, sticky on one side. 
and what I do is I cover my boards with this stick it down and if you have some kind of roller type instrument you know it helps because then you roll it down and once you roll it down it stays down but the nice part about it is when you're done sawing it just comes right off and so if you <coughs> sand before you do it it's fine now if you're lucky enough and I didn't grab one in my shelf you can get this at the dollar store it's so expensive it's a dollar a roll okay but if you go to the right dollar store you can find it and it's clear so the top is clear so when you do it so so a person that's doing intarsia would love it because they could put it on the board and then they can move their patterns to get that grain or that knot or something that they're trying to do because they can see through it now this is not like that paper you see in the magazine because remember this is only glue on one side so you have to use something on the other side now on the other side a lot of people maybe not use 70 cent but they use some kind of adhesive okay I don't because I started so long ago in doing this this wasn't wasn't a common thing to use so in my case this what this is what was common to use and this is what I've been using for years this is rubber cement okay this bottles probably 12 or 13 years old and I keep filling it up I buy it by the gallon and I do it the cool part about you rubber cement it doesn't get all over your shop the odor is not you know that drastic but what you do is you coat the pattern and I'm gonna do it in a second you coat the pattern and then you coat your surface which in this case I would I'm gonna have it covered with blue tape and when you do that you let them dry and then what happens is you got contact paper and they stick together and that's how I do all my all my stuff and I don't have to worry about getting that spray adhesive the only time I use a spray adhesive is if is if I'm doing a picture puzzle like that like the grandmother over there like this one I'll bring it over I'll bring it over and I'm doing this I would use a spray adhesive because I want it to hold and hold and hold for a long period of time other than that I use I use rubber cement and everything I do okay so what we're gonna do instantaneous I mean I don't I just do it and I do wide areas I do whole, I do whole 10 foot boards at one time okay so now what I'm gonna do only reason I'm doing this across here is because what I want to do is I'm using this to kind of hold my hold my stack together a little bit better and what I'll do is I'm gonna make sure that I do the edge the four edges so therefore I have no chance for it to to come up and cause me a problem because remember I'm sawing four I'm going to saw four at a time now this pattern is kind of interesting because what it is is all four of these are going to be cut exactly the same okay how do I get them together if they're all cut the same well I'll show you I'll show you that step and how I made it a little bit easier I can put them anywhere. What I would probably do is I would probably have put the pattern on the top board, and then I would put the nails in all the areas where I'm going to saw out. So I mean, I would have it very strong, and I can I'll put one nail in and show you. But I'm saying so. Okay, I've got it like that. That would hold it together, but it doesn't do one thing I need. I want to have the surface totally covered so I don't impregnate it with glue because it's a pain to get that glue out now if you're somebody like you know um, Rob over here he uses he uses that stuff and and he'll take it off and then he, he all he does is he puts uh, he puts uh, acetone or something what's what do you mineral spirits. mineral spirits on it but sometimes he forgets and because he saws with a spiral blade he sometimes <laughs> forget sometimes he forgets when he does it and then he uses a blowtorch to get rid of the uh, get rid of those fuzzies and if he forgets how long it's been since he put the mineral spirits on it it just kind of burns away the whole project it gets rid of fuzzies. Yeah. Yeah. fuzzies are gone fuzzies are gone any questions just ask while I'm going you know what because I wouldn't use blue tape if I wasn't if I wasn't stack cutting and I would just had a plain board 
you know, I'm right now I'm I'm using the kind I'm using the blue tape to hold this stack together. You know. Otherwise I'd put the contact paper on there if I was just on a regular board. I just brought it just to, to show people, you know, that it works and it does a good does a good job. Now really the they, they sell the one in the in the scroll saw magazine which is the uh, two sided two sided. Basically you put it on and you don't have to use any glue. It's expensive, but if you figure it out, if you know, if you figure it out, it's probably not more expensive because this is not cheap, okay, and tape is not cheap, and other stuff. So if that takes care of both the one side and also putting it down, you know, it's a it's a touch. Almost done here. Put one more, one more this way to hold my stack together. Make sure I hold my stack together. Huh? How big is this Each, in this case, they're a roughly a quarter of an inch. Just a little bit less than a quarter inch right now. Okay, so now, okay, I'm going to go this way. So now I got my pattern. Got to get my knife here, or get my scissors. Yeah. The secondary, the secondary use of the blue tape, or even to be honest with you, the uh, the shelf paper, it's made with petroleum. So by being made with petroleum, it allows the blade, every time it goes up and down, to get relubricated. So if you're cutting, especially if you're cutting cherry or walnut or something like that, it really helps. It's probably not, not that beneficial on pine, maybe poplar, but what I'm saying, when you're doing any hardwoods, babinga, you know, any of those, it would make a big difference. And, you know, I used to say, okay, I used to use it all the time, and then I got away from it, and then I started doing some heavy stuff, and it got, you know. Okay, now, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm cutting this off, sir. So there's our pat. There's our pattern. Okay. So what I'm going to do is normally what I always do is I take, I take my pattern, I put it upside down on the surface that I'm going to glue anyway because it really doesn't make any difference because the part that I really want to get glued is the edges because that's what normally pops up on you and whatever. Okay? So now I've got, so I'm gluing on my board. I'm already going to put glue on this board anyway so it doesn't make any difference. So now I've, I've got that on there and I'll move it over there. Now, I'll do my board. Yeah, I, did, I, I could probably make one spray with a spray can and I would be done, but, you know, I'm basically done. That's it. Okay? Now, I can wait a little bit. It doesn't make any difference. I can put it on right now and just let it set just a second. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bottom of this balloon at the edge of my boards. This one's uneven, but this edge is, is, is level. So I'm going to do just like that. I got the pattern, and then I lost the pattern, so I had to create one today so I could have it. Okay, so now I've got it on there. Okay, now, there's my pattern. Okay, and what I'm going to do is drill a hole, 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 and I'm going to drill one more hole. Where am I going to drill it? No, I got one here, 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 and here. I'm going to draw on one. Outside. I'm going to draw one in the outside because the less I come in from the outside, the stronger my my four will be. Okay, I've still got the bottom down here. I'm going to get it out. But if I go up here, I may go all the way around the outside, and then cut out. Then I'll cut this little bit down here. Okay. Now, I can do this a couple ways. I can take it over to that drill press and I could drill it, okay? But I was bad, and I bought a, I bought a new tool. What this is, this is a new, pro, this is a new product. It's, well, it's not a new product, it's been around for a while. What this does is it allows you to drill, it allows you, I'll see if I can do it this way and you can get it. What it does is it allows you to drill a big piece if you have it, where I'm gonna move over to there to drill press one second. Sometimes what happens is, the distance here causes you a problem if you're trying to do something big. You can't get that wood 
you know, it's not big enough. You can't get that drill hole in there. So this, what this does is because it's on the top, it allows you. So what you do is you put this on the top of the pattern, just like this. And so I want a hole there. What, did I unplug it? Well, this is nice. It was working fine. Oh, maybe one of these pulled out. There it is. I got it. Okay. So what I do, and what I do is I got a sacrificial board under here. So what I'm going to do is press. I let up on it too much. You know, but what it does is it allows you to go, if this pattern was this big, I could just keep going holes. Now, I need one up here. I need one right here. I'm doing it to the camera. I really should turn it around the other way, but. Okay, and then I'm gonna put one here on the outside, right? Right about here, I'm gonna put one on the outside. Also, I'm letting up on the, the thing. I'm letting up on this and what was causing it to seem like it was dying. Okay, but anyway, that's, that's that tool. So now I've got my holes in here. Who makes that pump? Uh, Seco, which is the same one that makes that saw that we had at the woodworking shop. Yeah. Right. Okay, so now, I'm sorry, you're gonna, it's gonna be like watching glue dry, I apologize. But maybe in the process of me sawing this, you'll see something that I do a little bit differently. Okay, so now I have it. And what I'm going to do... I am sawing, I am sawing maple, so it's not, not as quite as fast. So what I'm going to do is I got this point down here I want. I can do it one of two ways. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the very point of that, of that what position. Can you see that on the thing? I can't look up. Okay, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna go past it, the width of the blade, okay? Then I've said, okay, this spot right here is waste. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down. I went one, one saw blade past. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn in to the waste area, gradually let the, let the blade turn. Now what I'm gonna do is back down that one, one blade length I did, and now I'm gonna come back out, that will give me a nice sharp point down there. Everybody in here knows that, right? Raise your hand if you've done that before. See, I see, I'm speaking to the choir. But that way you can always get a nice point, but you just have to remember you wanna turn the blade into your waist area. And remember, if you're not doing in tar jumps, and you're doing stuff like this, or you're doing puzzles, and you're doing in segmentation, you know, if you go off the line a little bit, don't worry about it. Don't make a right angle saw to come right back on that line, okay? What you want to do is just keep going and make a gradual thing. Once you take the pattern off, you're the only person that knows you missed that line. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing up in this corner up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the corner, go an extra blade length. I'm going to back up, turn into the waist, come this way. Now I'm going to come back out. Now, of course, if you look at some of these other balloons, they have they have a lot more, lot more fret work or a lot more holes. But remember, I'm doing all four of them at the same time. Which one? Um, I'm doing all four of them at the same time. And the kicker is, if you, if you, if you, you know, if you want, you could paint. You could paint these, and you could paint them different colors. You could paint them, you know, whatever. Of course. <laughs> Bob. I 
think I did this one other time and had a had a blower from the audience. <laughs> Sorry. So you were the, you were the one that was blowing. I think. They don't. Now I did something wrong that I shouldn't that I shouldn't have done. What I did is I sawed this. I didn't check this. I didn't check this saw to see if it was if it was 90 degrees which you should always do even if it's in your own shop. But this one should even be worse. But it, it just so happens this one's at 90 degrees. But that's the ends. I mean, you can see they make a nice, nice point. But anytime you do something, you know, go down to your shop. I remember for, for some reason I cut something, finished the project. I was, doing, I was doing the basket project. I was doing one of those basket projects where the basket uh, kind of kisses on itself as you push it down. Well, of course, I had the saw set at a degree, you know, a certain degree to do that so they would, you know, come out like, come out like that. Well, in the process, then I went back downstairs a couple days later and, and saw the first puzzle. Couldn't get the thing apart. <laughs> so it even happens in your own shop. Now this one I don't have to do that. All I have to, all I have to do is just take the corner easy. But you could paint them if you wanted to. Once you get the general pattern, you can make all kinds of different patterns. Because all you have to do is do one face because all four faces will be uniformly the same. And then when you, you know, since I came from that hole, the easiest way, if you come down, when you get to the other side, if you just kind of glide yourself in there, you can make it so you don't have a nub there. Sorry, I'm hoarse. I was at a uh, craft show all week, or at two. I did a business showcase on Friday all day, and then I did craft show on Saturday. And I saw it for 16 straight hours, free puzzles for the kids. Okay, the same thing here. Anytime you've got a point like that, if you go one blade in, then you back it out, and then turn your blade in to the waist. Now we go back down in that slot. And then you come back out and you get a nice straight line. You get a nice, you get a nice crisp, crisp angle. Oh, pardon me? What kind of blade? This one, this one I have a Pegasus. I have a Pegasus blade, it's a number five. Number five is the same blade I use all the time, but this one's a Pegasus five. It's called, it's called a Pegasus Modified Geometry. It's, it's, it's almost identical to the uh, Ultra Reverse Flying Dutchman. The only difference, the only difference I can tell, it has a little bit wider kerf. So therefore, it's easier to get stuff out. OK, when you get these patterns, they come, you get, I, don't hold me to it, I think there's eight large patterns for making eight, eight big balloons. And then there's uh, eight for making the small balloons. And I found out today. If you take the small balloon pattern and you blow it up 200%, it comes exactly like the big one. Because all I, I couldn't find a big pattern and I needed one, so I had to uh, go find one. But, but once you get them, they work pretty good. Um, in my case, I can sell the big ones for $50. And I am surely glad that I did not take them this weekend. I would have been in deep doo-doo today. 
because everything I brought that I didn't think would sell, sold. So I wouldn't have had any examples tonight, so I couldn't have that happen, so I left them at home. But I sell the little ones for $25 or $30. Same down in this corner. I'm gonna go down here, go in there, go in there the whistle one way. Back up. Turn into the waist, then slide it back down. Sometimes it's better to leave the blade running when you're backing up. It doesn't get stuck as bad. Even though it's not doing anything, it's still cutting that saw curve that you would have. Really. You can see that on the camera a little bit. See how the, the pieces are moving? Because I'm, you know, I've basically cut everything away. So that's why I got my finger out here holding it down so it doesn't bounce. Because each of these, it's an inch thick, but each one's only a quarter. And if it catches, I could break off something. Okay. Okay. So that gives me okay. So now we've got the hot air balloon. Okay. Now what we want to do is cut it out. So that's why I drilled the secondary hole right here, so I could come all the way around and cut it, come out there, and then I only have a little bit where it's not attached really well. No. Uh, I don't think any smoother than a, a Flying Dutchman or this Pegasus. I'm going to let this one, I'm going to come out all the way. Okay. And now I'm going to come in here. I found out if you slow up a little bit, it'll catch the tooth as it crawls forward, will catch that other groove, and they'll match them up. So there's my piece. And so this stayed together fairly well. Mr. Rob, come up here, please. I need your help. See, see they're all together, even though, because I didn't cut the bottom. Okay. Will you take the pattern off of that, sir? And will you take the pattern off of this? I want to be in the way, here. Okay, now, in the, can you see here? Can everybody see these now, here? Okay. They have a pattern that they put on the top of this, because remember I said these were all interchangeable, okay? So they have a pattern, a paper pattern you put on, because all of these are the same now. So you put a paper pattern on top of them, and what that does is it creates the different, the varying things. So in this case, I'm going to look... And I'm going to say, OK, this one looks pretty good. I need to find my pencil. So what I did is I created, I created um, plexiglass patterns so that way I don't have to <coughs> stick it down and peel it. So now I've got this. And I'm going to go down here and draw, Did draw. You have your plexiglass pattern control, oh, yeah. yeah. Easy. If, and if, it's, if it gives you a hard time, cover it with packing tape or cover it with uh, masking tape or cover it with something because it'll cut a lot easier or cut it with blue with blue cover it with blue tape so what that did is I made that in there okay now if you'll see see my pattern so I got the right size okay that's number one so I'm gonna put that on there so I don't do it again can't get the tape at the bottom of Huh? Yes, I need to tape off that too, sir. I'm no, sorry. No, that... Okay, now, you get this. What, what I'm doing basically is line up, making sure I line up the bottoms. Okay? And then I'm looking here. See, because I'm going to cut that tab off of this one. That tab is going away. Okay? So there's two. 
They're all identical, so it really doesn't make any difference. But each one has a different thing. If you look at this one, this one is made so two of them can go in at the same time because of the way it, it goes together. So I, plexiglass was an easy thing to do. Here's, here's the set. So you can see that's what I did for the little ones. Just makes it easier to, you know, when you're doing multiples and you don't have to stick another piece on. You just have to make sure that your, your pattern is, is good. And make sure you'll notice what I'm doing here. I didn't do that at home one time. I cut two threes and it didn't go together. Didn't go together real well. So I learned my lesson by when I get rid of one, I just I uh, take care of it like this. I sell them for 25 or 30. Okay, so now I've got them all, all done. I don't really care. I don't care what number they are, but I know I've used all my patterns. And so I've got all my patterns, so I've got them all, okay? So now what I'm going to do is come in here, and what I'm going to do is cut. And making sure tonight I don't have a problem, I'm going to cut outside the line. Make sure I got plenty of, plenty of room. Because if my pencil wasn't straight, or if I didn't go down the edge, Oh no, I cut the top of this one off. That's fine. <coughs> I could have done a cookbook on this, but I thought it would be better for you to see it from start to finish, and maybe we would do some of the beginning basics that people hadn't seen. So that one's done. Okay, we're gonna cut the tab off of this one too. Saw a faster saw. And you can see, I usually use, usually hold my finger about 90% 90, 90 of the time is right behind the blade. That keeps it from bouncing up and down. And you know, what you gotta do is you got the wood you've got, you've got your blade you're using, and then you have your feed rate. You gotta let the blade cut. Otherwise you don't get a 90 degree. Rob, can you plug in my glue gun please? You can use wood glue, but I'm going to use a glue gun so that way, you know, you can see it quicker tonight. I kind of like it. It's kind of neat. kind of neat to see all the, the pieces to go together. So now I got my four pieces, okay? So this is, of course, going to be my top. And so what I've got is this one's going to go in here. It's going to set into the bottom, okay? Or I could do it the other way. I could do, I'll do it, I'll do it the other way. This one will go here. I 
something right, do I? Already got to stop right there. Yeah, this will work. This is right. Oh, okay. So now I got my got my thing, and you could so you could paint it before you get done. I mean, if I had a good good helper, they would take in the blue tape off. You know? <laughs> Okay, but see, but, but see how nice it is right here. Now, you probably don't have to, but what I do is I drop some glue right down in there, and that just makes sure that it can't can't slide apart. Okay. Now that takes care of that. Now, okay. Now, I'm not going to have you wait and do that. So basically, this right here our four pieces again basically cut a little bit differently if you'll notice it has the same in retrospect it has the same type of slots notice this one is big on the top big on the bottom little on the top and what they do is they come together and what they will do is create a gondola Well, it, 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 it comes up the same way. It comes like this. Um, pass it around. But what I'm saying, so I'm not going to cut one of those tonight. Now, there's two ways of doing it. There's two ways of doing this, okay? One way I did it, and I've been making them all like this before, I've been taking this, and I've been gluing this to here and making sure, oh, this piece has four holes in it, which give me the four pieces for the wire, or as our president said, I could use string, I could use whatever I want. It wouldn't look as good, I don't think, if you used like monofilament. Camouflage. Well, but if you, the monofilament, I think, wouldn't give you the effect you need, you know what I'm saying? I just happen to have this, it happened to be in my shop, and there was a piece of wire that somebody, you know, did it, I said, hmm. I didn't throw it away, so i just been pulling wire, and that's what I use. So then what you do, but what I was going to say is, there's two ways of doing it. Number one, I could glue this to here, okay? And that's the way I did a lot of them. Then I had to, then I had to stand on, on my head to, to put the two together. I found out after one of these came loose, I could do it a lot easier way, leaving this over here. And what I could do is all I need to do now is put the wire through here. And I can even do, I could even do this to make it easier. I could come here. I could go down the other hole, which I couldn't get to before. So I could come like this. I could come up. I could come down, up, down, up, down, okay. Need a little bit more. Okay, that look that doesn't look too bad. Be a short gondola, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut this off here. Try to keep this other one from falling on the floor on me. Okay, then what I can do is I can come here and see how bad I did. I may be short. I don't know. We'll see. I should have folded the wire in half, I would have been smarter. I didn't do a bad job, didn't come, didn't come out too bad. Oh, I'm going to. Okay, so now I've got them there. Now what I want to do is attach the gondola. I'm sorry. It's hard to do it so he can see it and for me to see it. Okay. So I'm going through those holes. You really don't need really big holes. And what I did here is I basically bent this over, put the next one in, make sure you're in the same right rotation. Bend this one over where you think it needs to be. 
come around. Now I'm over here. I got to take this one here. My hands are in the way, aren't they, cameraman? I'm sorry. So that's there. And I get. And I got this one. And I go this here. Okay. Now, what I do is I look and say, okay. Whoops. I see. Totally screwed it up. Okay. So what I got to do is take this one out because it's in the wrong. It's in the wrong hole. I got to move one over. And this one's going to have to go in here. If you weren't doing this in front of people, it would be easier, but okay, so that good. I still, I moved them all, it looks like. I was off on all of them. Come on, come out. Sometimes a wire wants to go the wrong direction. Okay, and this is where the cosmetics come in, okay? Rob, Rob do your van and put your finger on that. No, just put your finger on that. I don't want to need to cut. Just put your finger on that. It was a British wave. Okay. So all I'm doing is turning them because, you know, I, I thought I'd cut them and make this, but really sometimes the thicker they look, look a little bit better. But I like, this is the first one I've done like this where I put the wire through both sides. It makes it a lot easier to do than trying to put four individual wires in there. And so, you know, that's it. I think I got one more to go. That looks pretty straight. Okay, and just that sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Rob. Okay, so there's my there's my basket. That's my top of my basket. Okay, that's the top this way. Okay, now I've got a piece of wire here. You can't waste wire. So what I'm going to do is put this through here. What I'll do is I'll come up and I'll do a little twist. I'll get it the hot. I don't know if it's hot yet. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm doing that and putting that there only because the wire's a little bit more forgiving than something in through that hole. And so now I've got this. Cameraman, give me a long, give me a long shot because I'm just going to sit right here. I'm going to just come over here. And all I'm going to do is put a squirt down there. My glue gun's not working with the flip. Of course, this is my bad glue gun. But it's enough. It'll be cool. You got glue guns that are really bad sometimes. What happens is you, you uh, use them and then you forget, forget to unplug them for two days, and they don't do really well. <laughs> so I bought a new one, but I didn't bring my new one. Anyway, it's not the best thing, but it, it'll stay glued. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I don't need that. And what I'm going to do here, because I got that up there, what I can do is... Um, this is glue I like to use. I use either uh, Eileen's or uh, Bob put me onto this. What it is, it's tight bond. It's no run, no drip. And what they use it for is putting molding in the ceiling. So what it does, it has a high tack content. And it dries relatively fast and it dries clear. And so it does a pretty good job. I mean, I use Eileen's and I use this, it's, it's about 50-50. And I usually, hold, usually at my shop, they're up this direction, but this one's been laying down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure 
that I get all the pieces that are there. Got a pretty good glue on them. And then we're going to take, take this. And because I did it this way, I really don't have to worry about it. Uh, well, we're going we're gonna to supplement this. Any questions so far? Did it help to do it from beginning to end, or was it boring? <laughs> yeah, it was probably boring. I understand yeah. that. I have one question. Okay, ask it. When you cut your four acrylic patterns, yes. is there any reason you just didn't cut a fifth one with the actual pattern on it so you could just trace it on the blue tape versus gluing? Oh, I could have. I just never did. Now, sorry, my hot glue is not working. You got me a hook, sir? Okay. Okay. And uh, Mr. Cameron will go like this, and we're going to go here. And isn't this gorgeous? <laughs> okay. But that's it. But all the patterns are the same. But like I said, I did this one only tonight because it was easy. I only had three cuts to do. Um, you just, they all come and get fairly square. This one has a lot of stuff in it. But you could paint, you know, before you, you, before you put them together, you could draw that center line or you know where that line is. And you could paint red, blue, and yellow, and green if you wanted to. And make, make you know, like a very colorful balloon. Or you could paint them this way or however you want. I mean, a lot of them have different things on them. Um, if you haven't seen it close up, this one is the thin wood. This one's, yeah, yeah, this one's cut with masonite. I mean, that's just a piece of hardboard because it needs that thickness. Now, um, this one, this, this is what happens when you, when you make a mistake, okay? See my mistake? See in the camera? I cut it too. Th I used too thin a board, so then then I cut the wide holes and it it wouldn't stay together. So then what I did is I just added a little piece on each side, and when you get done with it, do you really see it? But that was a way. I didn't feel like, you know after I did that many cuts, I didn't want to throw it away. So I just added another piece to make it thicker, so it would. Stay together. So that is a special feature. Yeah, I mean, it gives it an inside. Um, so but you can see there's the thickness of the big ones. Huh? Huh? Quarter inches, the thickness. Yeah, quarter inch. Well, you can make it a little, I mean, if you happen to have wood that was a little bit bigger, what you have to do, what you have to do is, okay, that needs to be the size of your wood. Okay? This needs to be twice the size of your wood. That needs to be the size of your wood. That needs to be twice the size of your wood. That needs to be twice the size of your wood. Twice the size of your wood. Twice the size of your wood. And to be honest with you, I think, yeah, that works because of the way they go back together. If we look, if we look this way, Because what the way they go together is there's only two going through that hole. But that's the easiest way to do it. And uh, what? They gave you the, this was this was a pattern. And just like just like he said, well, here's the reason I didn't do that. It's great for doing this one. But then you got this one and you got this one. To me, it's easier to press a button and glue it than it is to create to cut a plexiglass of that. I mean, I could, once you did it, yeah, you could. There's no reason why you couldn't. But, and then these are these get kind of neat. This is the size of the ones for the little one. And they fit together the same. They fit together the same way. So what I did is. Um, 
See, it's got the same features as the thing. It goes, it goes together the same way. Now, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, so what you can do is what I do is I glued up a lot of them at one time. You know, there's one pattern. There's another pattern. There's another pattern. I think that's the same. Nope, that's a different one. There's another one. There's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. You know, some of these, that's another one. This one is, this one's around here somewhere. Yeah, it's right there. That's a lot of, that's a lot of inside cuts for a small piece. And then here. And then what I did is I made that, and then what I did, what I did is because you need, you need four, you know, of each one, what I did is I, I filled one board, you know, one of these four stacks up with all these. So every time I cut one, I made enough for four. So that gave me all my pieces. And so now all these are go together. Cause see, here's, here's one piece. There's another piece. Uh, let me find here's, that's another one. And if I work it, I need one more. What do I need? What do I need? That's equal to that. Which one am I missing? I got that one. Where's the one I'm missing? I can't see which one I'm missing. Of course, I was going to do that before I. OK, we'll do it this way. Okay, this is going to go here. This is going to go here. And this should go. These get kind of small. Where's the hammer? No, 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 no. The hammer doesn't work. But anyway, this will. Not exactly, but there it is, pretty close. But that's how it goes together. That's how they go together. So any additional questions? Yes, sir. I got it from I got it from flying fly, uh, from wooden teddy bear. Wooden teddy bear, and they're not they're like like seven bucks, and you can buy both of them. You know, it's not not that not that bad. Uh, flying Dutch or uh, wooden teddy bear is a uh, you know they don't they don't give you any electronic versions of it. Uh, both are you saying large and small? They give you both. Well, you you can buy large pattern, or you can buy the small pattern, or you can buy both together, and they give you a give you a discount. But anything else for the good of the order? If not, I appreciate it. Maybe I'll see some of you on Wednesday night if you're turning. And thank you for coming. <laughs>